within the Zaya, there's Raim Hemne. Raim Hemne seems to have been written later, after the Gemara. But it's brought together with the Zaya, it explains the mitzvahs. And here, in Parshish Boy, Daf Mem Alev Amet Beis, if anybody wants to look inside, he is discussing the mitzvah of Peter Chamoir. That the firstborn, an animal that comes out first from its mother's womb, has a specific form of holiness, has to be treated in a certain way. All this has to do with the relationship of the spirit with what's taking place, the excitement, the different cycles that happen in the life and emphasizing the different realities that are happening spiritually so that the senses can participate. This is a very important point when we speak about commandments. In the ancient world, there were those who had wisdom and they relied on internal senses, not the five senses that we're familiar with. They would get their information from senses that are hidden from the eye and can only be felt and seen within. And then there were the simple people, the children, who didn't understand the depth of reality. All they had to rely on was their five senses. When a being is still relying on the five senses, they're essentially an animal state, because the five senses are feeding the imagination. The five senses are not feeding the intelligence directly. And so, if all there is are the senses, then the intelligence is not yet awake. The intelligence is not yet in charge. And so, in order to train those who don't have intelligence, so that they can receive intelligence, so that they can grow, so that they can develop their internal organs in order to gain new sensitivities and relate to concepts and ideas that are beyond their current perception. The third addresses concept, intelligence, the invisible, into vessels that can be touched and seen by the senses. This makes the invisible visible. And so this is how they would express to those who don't yet understand the deeper meanings of life that there, are, there is certain emphasis in different areas and we need to try and find behind these rituals what is really being said in order to wake up the intelligence. In order to wake up that part within ourselves that is beyond the senses, that is not fooled by the senses. The senses create the illusion of separateness. The senses are wrong in that sense. Because when the intelligence wakes up, it realizes that it wouldn't be possible for anything to be separate of the original one. And so the senses are fooling us. Not intentionally. The senses were not designed to fool us. Our way of thinking, our culture, is using the senses, interpreting in a way that doesn't allow us to see the truth. And so here, in the Raima Hamna, where he's speaking about the firstborn animal, he's speaking about 
the human being before it's born. The human being is before he is born, he is already getting himself prepared for what's about to happen. And so he says, because the Yesa Banash Bahayamba before a person comes out into this world, the Yipik Merechem Yemei will come out from the womb of his mother. Vayovek Yeshem already, somebody is getting involved with him. Do Gavriel, Bahi Ovak the offer. So as the spirit is getting dressed into earth, the spirit is reducing its power in order to be able to sustain this little body rather than being the all-knowing being that it was. The Itmar, Vayitzer Hashem Lekim Sodom, Ofer Min Adomo, Ve'oilif Le'ishivim Loshen, Ve'vigindu Vayitzer. So when he's creating him, he's teaching him 70 languages. What does this mean? Every baby, before it comes out into the world, knows all 70 languages. So he says, there's two angels in there. That's why it says, Vayitzer. Vayitzer, it says, with two yudin. Chad Yetzer Toiv, the Olaf Leishivim Loshen. Chad Yetzer Ra, the Ovikimai. He has two different angels. One is teaching him the 70 languages, and the other one is distracting him. The Itmar, Kinoga, Bekaf Yerach Yaakov, Begid Anusha, Vashkach Mina Yishivim Loshen, the Olaf Leyetzer Toiv. So when Yaakov was touched by the Gid Anoshe. He forgot, and Gid Anoshe means the vein of forgetting. He forgot the 70 languages. So what, what does this mean to know the 70 languages? Language is essentially a dress. Language is trying to express something that's beyond language. Language is our ability to take charge of the world of spirits. In fact, in the beginning, knowing language, knowing the more advanced forms of language, knowing how to call the spirits through language, was considered sorcery, unless it was to be developed for prophecy. Because language changes the spiritual reality. Today, we're all using language so often that we don't realize what it means to talk. The world is so covered in spells that we don't know what it means to cast a spell. We do it without second thought. We're constantly casting spells on ourselves, on our children, on our friends, anybody we interact with. Because we're affecting their spiritual makeup and we don't really know what's in their best interest. And so, to know the 70 languages, all the 70 languages are forms of movement within the spiritual. And so, if we're creating a body, if we're creating all the cells within a body, then we know all the languages, we know all the potentials and all the possibilities, all the cells and all the different expressions of the spiritual that they can create. Everything is there, everything is ready and potential. And yet, as the child will come out, they're going to be activated through speech and then they're going to repeat the vibrations of their environment until they learn to take charge and transcend the original settings. So he says, We couldn't call do, nochsin ime arbo malochen. Before this process, come down with him four angels. His angels, he's going to attach to you 
to protect you in all your ways. Those angels are always present. If we're there, the angels are there protecting us. If the angels weren't there protecting us, we wouldn't be there. We need angelic protection in order to exist on this planet. We need a whole staff of angels just to keep us going at any given moment. Millions and trillions. And so the force that creates the source dispatched his angels so that they protect you. And these four angels who are at the head of all the different groups, all the battalions. He is les chesovas. If he has the appropriate lineage that his parents try to protect the creation process and therefore the angels that were involved in creating this child were aligned with the wisdom and the holiness then the angels that he is receiving, the way that they will be expressed, is Chad Michoel, one Michael, Michoel, Bishchis Avram. With Tenyone Gabriel, the second is Gabriel, Bishchis Yitzchak, it lasso the Nochesime Nuriel, Bishchis of Yaakov. Nuriel is in the Schus of Yankov, sometimes they call it Oriel or Nuriel. It reveals Refoil b'schised Adam Kadmo in the schus of Adam Rishon. Refoil. V'yetzer atayv la'elemine. So now there is a host of angels. On top of them, who is running them? The Yetzer atayv, the good angel, the angel that was teaching you all seventy languages, teaching you the truth of how life operates and all your different potentials. What if he comes from a lineage that didn't understand the importance of how they're creating children? Oslima Arba, then he has a different form. Ovoin, sin. Mashchis, the destroyer. Af is anger. Vachaimo is rage. The Yetzirah eliminate. This team is being led by the Yetzirah. This team is all forms of fr- frustration that await a life that's not lived in accordance with the principles of the truth. The Maiden Leil said, now he's getting judged by all these because he's coming into a situation where he is not really welcome. He doesn't feel like he's part of the ownership here. He feels like an outcast and therefore the, the forces that were meant to protect, the forces that were meant to embrace, seem to have turned against. That's why we've learned the evil one, the evil spirit, the evil force is in charge of him, is judging him. And so when an evil force judges, there's no mercy. Evil judges for the sake of judging. It's not really about making the world a better place. So when the, the, the evil one is judged by the evil force, he has no way out of the judgment. Tzadik gets ratayv Tzadik gets judged by the one who knows human nature intimately and therefore can always be explained so that he remains a tzaddik. In the middle is one who sometimes is being judged by one and sometimes by the other. We can do Gavriel Sometimes this one and sometimes that one. See, the other angels are never judging. Michoel, Noriel, Rifoel, they're doing their task. The, the side of judgment is Gavriel, the left. If Gavriel is there, then the judgment is in order to help the person, to help the situation, because it's a holy judgment. It's a judgment that's related to the real 
original owner of judgment, the way the judgment was designed to be used. If it goes sour, then it goes to the Samach Mem. Then it goes to another power, a power that doesn't have the human being at heart. Ilchol Barnash, the Izbe Arbe Yisoidim, for each person that has the four elements, Arba Malochim Nachsen Imei, Mimino, Ba'arba Mismolo. On his right side there are four, and on his left side there are four, meaning as soon as you are entering the four elements, they can work for you or against you. If they work for you, that's the four to the right, Michol, Gavril, Rafol, Noriel. Ve'arba mismol, if they work against you. Oven mashchis avachaimo. Destruction and anger. Misitr de gufa. Metatr nuches alemi yemino. Vesamach mem mismolo. And so, the potentials allow for us to choose how we're going to manifest our reality. And according to how we're going to direct, that's where everything is going to go. The elements are going to follow us, where we lead them. The less banash, the less be'ar be'esoid, there's not a single human being that doesn't have all four elements. Aval, kefim yesoid ad agbim be'i, according to which element is stronger in him. This depends on the astrological situation when his body was created and he was released into the world. So he might have more or less of certain elements. That becomes the most dominant of all the four. If he's Arya from the right, then Mechol is first. Then comes the left. If he's from the axe to the left side, then Agdim Gavril. Gavril is the first. Abasar Mechol, Abas Nuril, Abas Rifol. Imazole Nesher, Nesher is Nuril. Agdim Nuril, Abasar Mechol, Abasar Gavril, Abasar Rifol. Imazole Odem, Agdim Rifol, Abasar Mechol, Abasar Gavril, Abasar Nuril. So everybody's order is according to what is more dominant within their makeup. What are they dressed as? What did the life force that's in all dress up as now in you? Those who belong to the right, all their faces are compassion. They pay kindness to the environment. They have a white, whitish complexion. He is always doing kindness. He'll be Kind and intelligent, if he's going to try to learn the truth. If he doesn't try to find the truth, so if a person like this doesn't try to find the truth, what happens to his kindness? Kindness means that he doesn't see boundaries between people. Instead of now giving to everyone because there's no boundaries, now he'll take other people's because he doesn't see the boundaries. And so based on how his heart is, based on how he connects to the truth, that's how the attribute is going to be manifested in him. Misitra de Gavril from the left side. Arba Ampin Delay, Dino. His four faces are judgment. Midas Adino Rashiaya, to bring judgment upon the wicked. Somebody has this in the right way, he knows where to use his courage he knows where to use his strength in order to help. Giber be he knows how to direct his life force so that it doesn't cause damage. Yerechet, he's afraid of doing anything wrong. Dain Yehei Sasi Beraise, Vigiber Talmide, he'll be able to understand his learning very deeply. According to his judgment, he'll be able to create all the different criteria to discriminate between very thin layers because he has this attribute that's strong in him. If somebody goes in the wrong way with this attribute, so then he's fighting with the wrong people. 
and then he's strong that even he's doing, even when he's doing the wrong things he's not afraid of others so he has a red face this one from the left one was mazal is the eagle which is ear so in the beginning we had water in the right and fire on the left and now we have ear which is the eagle Lav Rachman Sagi, Lav Midas Adin Sagi. He's not too much here and he's not too much there. He's in the middle of those two. Bani Nibi Yatsatov Midas Tov Nilei, Bani Nibi Yatsatov Midas Bishin. Vilei Ampin Chivurin Vesimokin. His face is also a balance between red and white. Man de Mazole Odom. We see through the Toiv. Kolel Milkal Midas Toivis. So Odom, the, the Yisoy the Ofer, is one that has all three. That it has a balance between all three. So he has all the good attributes. Chosid, Vachocham, Vigibir, Batoira, Yerechet. He's kind, he's intelligent, he's strong. He's afraid of sin. Memule, Bechol, Midestoven. He's filled with all good attributes. Igvan, Ampo, Yikumen. He has a, a darkish complexion. We sit to the Yetzirah, Memile, Mikol, Midestoven. If he goes in the wrong direction, he has cleverness. And so he comes, he gets to all the wrong places. <coughs> if the offenses, the guilt of a man are high, then he goes under the groups to the left, which are run by the evil inclination. So slowly, as he goes to the left, all the interpretations to the right start disappearing from his mind. He no longer resonates with those vibrations. And so the Yetzirah the good inclination, disappears. He's bringing forth on his organs the forces that shouldn't be there. If his purity, his innocence, is great. Shaltin mashirin the etzeratov. Then, the teams of the kind inclination are in charge. Adis to look I call mashirin the etzerat until slowly, he no longer remembers how to think badly. He no longer remembers any evil interpretation of reality. Vamlechal kol avon the mashirin the etzeratov. He brings he. takes upon all his organs the kingdom of the kind inclination. By his himno, at that time, when all the teams of evil have left, when all the interpretations of evil have left, Sholitalei Shem Avaya, the name of the infinite being can enter into that organism. Because peace has returned. Evil has left, and the intelligence can now rejoice within that being. So now that we're talking about this name. So it says for a person to have this name that should live within him, he needs to align his elements. The elements are not simply on the physical level. The elements can be recognized on the emotional level and the spiritual level. And so when the elements are balanced, then the name of four letters comes into these elements. Each element becomes a seat for one letter, and the spirit becomes the intelligence that combines these letters. And then that person is a small universe, is a small model of reality. It says, the whole chayvan, din and chayvas hakodesh, all the angels that give life. Be'azman de'shmo kadesh is they're called in the holy name. 
הדוד יחסיב, זה איפה זה, verse says, כל הניקר בשמי ולכבוד את דברוסיף, everything that's called within my name, and I've created for my glory, I feel a call bri in this bri bohoin. So everything that was created, meaning, from the original creation to all the creations made by his creations. Everything that has his name, that carries his name, which means it's aligned and it's separated from the evil forces, was created for his glory. There is not any creature that doesn't have the signature of this name within its life force that gives it life. Begin in Shtemoido in order to reveal to us Leman Divrole, who created this creature. Vahai Yud, Idiokne Deraisha, the first Yud is the head. So this is the beginning of the creature. The two Hayes, Diokne, the Hayat's bond, the Amina, Vahai the Smola. The five fingers on the right and on the left, two Hayes. Vav, Diokne, the Gufa, the Vav is like the shape of the body. So the, here you see in the human, you see the signature. Head, hands, body. And in the animals you see the signature. Head, hands, body. Or you can do, on either side, we have head, the yud, hand, the hay, above the body, and then another hay by the, by the foot. Where we have the five toes. So then we have the name on both sides. And Omar, therefore he says, Vel mi sedam yini ve'ezve yemar kodesh. Who can you compare me to? Where can you find something that is so deeply embedded, so deeply ingrained in everything that exists, that it left a signature? Who can compare? What can compare? How can we compare anything to that power? Less bechol bria, the eshve kavosi. There is not in all of creation a creature that is similar to me. Vaafogav devrosi lo kidmus asvan deli. Even though I manifested my name in the image of letters, da no yochel lemachoa hitzura ilamavat lo kamazimnen. I can change that image. And I can make it in many ways, many times. There's nobody that can change my image, how I am, how I am with myself. There's nobody above me. There's nobody that dictates to me. There's nobody that can decide anything that's different than my deepest desire. If we can do, therefore the Pesach says, not like our force that we rely on is the force that they rely on. Our force is different because our force is a force that is literally everywhere. It's not something that we're calling because it needs to come here. It's something that we're calling in order to remember so that we get filled with it. So that we become closer to it. And then we're protected. One will ask, Do Ksiv, Kilarisum called Tmuno, you didn't see any image. So, how can you say that the Creator has an image based on the letters of how we're describing Him? The answer is, This image, which is not really an image, which is an indication to a conceptual reality that can be experienced. This image we did see, Duxiv, because the verse says, It looks at the image of the name. We can't create a name that's different than this name. This name is the name that was chosen by the intelligence that had the power to do so. We cannot change this based on simply taking other letters, even though in the other letters it's the same force that's giving them power. And yet, these letters have been chosen 
And these letters represent to us the name of the one that's beyond us, because this is how he chose. He could choose differently, and then it would be different. It begins Domar, and therefore it says, "Well, Misadam Yinim Vesh." But therefore it says, "Who can you compare me to?" And I shall be equal. Well, Misadam Yinel, Umad Mustar Chulot. Who will you compare the living force to? And what type of image will you evaluate for him? Even this tmuna that we are interacting with in order to awaken the force, in his place, he doesn't even have this image. He doesn't have a connection to that either. This was manifested for our purpose. When he comes down to be king over the creatures, and he spreads over them, each one will see him according to his vision, to his perception, to his imagination. This is why it says, in the hand of the prophets, I will be imagined. Meaning that as long as, long as there are images, we're imagining. And yet, in order to connect the imagination to the intelligence, this image, the image of the letters, was given in order to connect us to the intelligence beyond. Even though I'm letting you perceive me according to the manifestation that I created, which is the human, I'm letting you perceive me as the intelligence of the human soul, because this is as far as we can perceive, and yet who can you compare me to? Even though I'm being perceived by a human, I'm not like a human. I'm beyond anything that a human can perceive. Before there was any form in the world, before he drew any images, he was alone, without any image, without any imagination, without any drawing, without any capacity to describe anything, because anything that we would use to describe or define or indicate only came after creation. The one that is known before creation, that is beyond any form, we're not allowed to give him form, we're not allowed to give him an image. Not in the letter He, not in the letter Yud, but not in the holy name either. So even though we're connecting through the holy name, we know that there is something that is beyond the holy name, that dressed up in the holy name, in order for us to have a relationship with it. And yet, the holy name does not constrain it in any way. Because the holy name is an emanation that allows us to relate. V'loi b'shim oysin nekudu ba'almud is not any letter or any dot. V'hai'i uke lo risim kol t'minu. We call dover diz bay t'minu v'dim yu lo risim. You didn't see any form, any image. <coughs> this is why they lost their grasp on reality, on, on the reality that they were still occupying their bodies is because everything became so formless that they could no longer relate to form. Once he made the form of the higher man that is becoming in this world, Nochis Tamon, he came down to there, Kivyochul, his life force became interested <coughs> in the developments of the higher man. Therefore, we call him by the name. Once he's in that form, which is the original human form, the perfected human form, once he came into that form, then we call him by the name. Begin the Ishtimoidin Lebemidiz Therefore, like this, we can get to know him through his attributes. We say, who created the human soul? The human soul was created by a soul that's bigger than the human soul. It's the collective soul, the soul that contains all souls. And the human soul was created in its form. The form that he dressed up in, in order to interact with the world, that's how he created the human. This way we can get to know him. We get to know him by knowing the human. And then we understand from the individual, we understand the collective. 
And so through the human, we discover the attributes. We discover the attributes that we would like to interact with, the attributes that are less pleasant. And then we develop in order to interact with them through the attributes that our intelligence indicates. And this is how we get to know them. And therefore, the Korah El Elohim Shalitz Vos Eye is called by all these different names. Begin This way we can get to know him through all the attributes that he comes out in. How will the world be led through kindness or through judgment? All according to how humanity directs the life force. The Ilo is Pashit Noira called Brion. If his light won't spread on all the creatures, how will we ever get to know him? How can we say the earth is filled with his glory if nobody understands and nobody knows who he is and what he wants? So only when His glory will be revealed to us can we say that the earth is filled with His glory. Now it's filled, but it's hidden. It's filled because it exists. If it exists, it's filled with His light. It's filled with existence. But it's hidden because we take existence for granted. We've never felt what it's like not to exist. And so we assume that if we're here to talk about it, existence is already something we can take for granted. And yet... Existence is the highest form of light. And so, Malach al is true already. The earth, the earth is filled with His glory, no doubt. Our awareness is not filled with His glory in the appropriate way. We're not there yet. Vaile man de yashvile lishim Pity upon the man who will think of the Creator as any of his attributes. The most potent one, the most dangerous one, the most damaging one. The left, the attribute of judgment and fear. Pity upon the man who will draw an image of the Creator in the form of a judge in the form of one who is in competition with the creatures that he created. Even from his own true attributes, if one will separate one attribute from the intelligence that's creating the attributes, woe upon that man, woe upon that spirit and the experience that's going to result. If somebody will imagine that the Creator is in any way limited or not fully familiar with reality the way that humans are. If somebody imagines that the Creator has shortcomings like the humans that He created. Humans live in dirt. They live in the earth. They're pieces of the earth. The intelligence that creates doesn't have these limitations. Everything comes out in perfect order. And so a human can see how the human body decomposes. He can see that this vessel is a vessel of a temporary expression. It's not the original light that you are. And it's certainly not the original light that is everything. This is a representation of that. It cannot separate from it. And yet, it's not the full experience. There are many curtains. There are many filters that are not allowing the spirit within the body to experience the reality that's available to the spirit outside the body. (laughs) <laughs> so we get to know his interactions because we see his interactions. We see, oh, now he dressed up in judgment. It happens. Now he dressed up in kindness. Now he dressed up in compassion. Now he dressed up in survival mode. So we can see 
the spirit, the source, dressing up in the different modes, and yet we cannot imagine him as any of these modes. These modes are expressions of something much more potent, something much more real, something much more ever-present. And so we can imagine, based on the interactions that we have with reality, what are the expressions that the Divine Life Force can take. And yet, the Divine Life Force is not that and cannot be limited to any of that. Because beyond all the attributes, if the Life Force chooses not to express itself in any of these attributes, it's still itself. It's, in a way, it's itself even more. It's at the source, it's at the root of itself. And therefore, the attributes don't tie it down, they don't make it be limited to anything. <coughs> it's simply the form of expression that he uses as he interacts with life. Kigamno de Yamo, like the sea. The lesbamayo de Yamo, the nafkimine, tfise cloud The water doesn't have any form, it doesn't have any image. Elobis pashtiso de mayo de Yamo, almono, the e aro, is avidimyoin. When the water goes into a vessel, now we're going to see the water in the shape of the vessel. This is the illusion. Now we're imagining the water in the shape of a glass. Water doesn't have the shape of a glass. Water is shapeless. When it's in a glass, it looks like a glass. So once we start spilling the water into, into different vessels, now we can start counting. Before that, there was nothing to count. It was just the water. The water is water. It doesn't have any distinctions or definitions. Now, if we're going to take, let's say, and create a well that's going to be filled by this water, now we have two. We have the source of the water, and we have the river that's coming out of it. And yet, it's still the same water. It still didn't receive any form. It's still not two. It's still just one. And, but now because of the vessels, because of how it's being expressed, now we can start counting. The Basar of Edmond Ravrave made a big vessel. The Golman Dovet Hafir Ravrave made a big dig for the water. The Ismele Min Mayo, the Nufik Min Mayon. Now the water is filling up from the well. Ahimona Iskere Yom. This well, this vessel, is called the sea. Vimonatli so, it's the third vessel. So at the beginning there was the, the source that has water without, without limit. Then there was a mayon where it's running. And then there was a yam where it gathers up all the water. Vahimon <coughs> araver with this big vessel that's called yam. Ispelig leshiv in the It gets separated into seven rivers. According to the vessels, the kalim that were prepared, accordingly the water will come into the seven rivers. The source, the well, the sea, and the seven rivers, together is ten, which is indicating here is against the spheres. So in this sense he's calling Keser, the first sphere, he's calling it the source. From there comes life, undifferentiated intelligence, life force, will. Then there's the Mayon, there's the flow of that life going into Chachma. It's, it's receiving definition through wisdom. Vayamo, then there's the Bina, the understanding that brings it into a more practical stance where all the wisdom is being gathered in order to make sense of it. And then Shivan Khan, then come the attributes out and manifestation. If this artist is going to break the vessels that he created, Yahadrin Maya then all the water goes back to the source. Then the vessels remain broken and dry without any water. So this was all a mushal. Here he's giving us a metaphor with water and 
the water coming out of the source and it's going into the vessels and if the vessels break the water has nowhere to go and it stays in the source. Now he's saying is the same way the source of sources over the spheres he made 10 emanations. called the source. There's no limit to the flow of its light. Even in Do, Korel Legarmi Ainsov, that's why he called himself <coughs> the Infinite One, because there's no limit to his light. But Les Le Dmos Vitsura, he has no image, he has no form. But Saman Les Mona Lemit Pasle, there's even not the capacity to identify him as anything. Leminda Be Yedir Klal, to know anything about him. Begin Do Amri Bey Bamifim Chalti, there's don't even try to speak about the source. The source is beyond approach, is beyond speech, is beyond anything that we can grasp. Is just life force with abundance beyond anything we could imagine. Don't investigate what's been covered from you. The Basar, after the source, Ovid Monazeri made a small vessel. Vido you, this is the letter you, this is the beginning of the name. Vismal and it fills up from the life force. It's a source, it's a well that flows wisdom. What happens when this wisdom is plentiful within a spirit? Then we say that the infinite being dressed up as a wise man. Because the life force that came through from the source into the being is filled with wisdom. So therefore he is called wise once he dresses up in this pool, in this vessel, in this dress. What is it called, this vessel? What is this dress called? The garment is called Chachma, wisdom. He dresses up in wisdom and then he's wise. Then he made a big vessel, we call it Yam, we call it Bina. He called that understanding. When he goes in there, then he's a maven. Then he understands. Before that, there was nothing to understand. Only when he goes into the vessel, he goes in and dresses up as one who understands. And in that sense, he understands better than anybody understands. Why? Because he's at the root of understanding. Everybody gets a little bit of that juice. He has all the juice. And yet he's beyond it. For him, there's nothing to understand before creation. Everything, all the understanding comes once he creates, and then he understands what he creates. His wisdom comes from himself. He's, it's his life that's flowing. He's defining it. His understanding comes from within himself. We wouldn't call Chachma Chachma. Only because the flow of the wise one is flowing within it. Then we call it wisdom. If it's not the flow of the wise one, it's not wisdom. So the name of the garment is based on how did the life force dress up. Oh, the life force is revealing wisdom. Okay, so now we know that here he dressed up as wise. You wouldn't call it Bina. Only because the understander, the one who understands, is, who is dressing up in it. If he left, it would remain dry. The water left the sea. And the rivers are broken and dry. This is exile, the nature of exile. There's no water and the rivers are dry. The attributes are not being replenished with the life force, with the desire for life. Then come the seven rivers. He made them into seven precious vessels. We call them Gedula, Gevura, Tiferes, Netzach, Hoid, Yisod, Malchus. These are the seven. We call it Garmi Godel, When he is in Godel, when he is in Gedula, he dresses up in Gedula. Then he is called Godel. We call it Gibor, Begevura, Mefoyar, Betiferes, More Netzach, and Krovim, Ben Netzach, Metzochim. So when he is in Chesed, he is called big and kind. When he is in Gevura, he is called strong. When he is in Tiferes, he is called uh, proud, when he is in Netzach, he is called one who wins, one who perseveres. Behoid, Korshmei Hoid
hoides the glory of his design. Iba Yisoyed Kodesh Meit Tzadik. When, when, this, when he dresses up as Yisoyed, then he's dressing up to communicate in order to give. And therefore we call him the Tzadik. Yisoyed Kodesh Simach Bey. Kol Monen V'chol Almen. So when the water comes into this vessel called Yisoyed, this feeds all the other vessels because the goal of all the vessels is to be mashpia to the Malchus. But Malchus Kodesh Meit Melech. Through Malchus, we call him king. And so when all the vessels are in place and the life force is flowing, then he dresses up as all these names. And then the spirit is healthy. When the water is not flowing, because there's no wisdom, then the attributes get broken. And then there's no flow. He doesn't dress up as these things. And then the body starts feeling the difference. Veloi. It's to him <coughs> that all these attributes are working for. He has the kingdom. He has the power to add life and to remove life from any of the vessels. To add flow or to reduce the flow. There's nobody that's adjusting his flow. He's in charge of all the flows and nobody's in charge of his flow. Then he made servants to these vessels. He made a throne on four legs. He has six steps. You have ten together. Whenever we see ten, it's relating to these ten. Begin the Torah, the Sivet Basara Dibra, like the Torah that was given, given with the Ten Commandments. All the 613 mitzvahs are related to the Ten Commandments. In the Ten Commandments, Claudius already heard everything, the whole 613. They're all coming from the same principles. Begin Alma, the Masabresh is because of the world that's called Masabresh, the Isbere Basara Mamarish, that was created with ten sayings. Yeah. Under the throne, he prepared the groups of angels that are going to service the throne. Dirin Malochim, Er Elim, Srofim, Chayos, Efanim, Chashmalim, Elim, Elohim, Bne Elohim, and Ishim. These are ten different levels of angels that are serving the throne. The throne is for the intelligence that created, and the throne lives in the man who purifies his heart. He gave even to these, he created servants that should protect these and make sure that they get to do their function or there are going to be consequences. And that's the Samach Mem we called Kitas Delay. The evil inclination in all these groups, they're like clouds that the forces that need to act within the earth can sometimes act from on top of these Evil forces, in and consistent line, they're like horses to bring things into the world. So if the world is not ready to hear wisdom directly, to change their attributes directly, then the forces will go through the evil inclination and force change and create a different environment where people have to rethink their strategy. How do we know that clouds were created in order to ride on them. Hashem is traveling on a light cloud and he's coming to Egypt. Here we're talking about the angel that represents the Egyptians, the prototype, the original source from where Mitzrayim received all their spiritual power. So as they saw that their head, their power, their force that they were worshipping and they built it and they invested in it and they created a tremendous spiritual footprint on this planet for their source. And yet suddenly they see 
that their source was just a tool in the hand of a deeper intelligence that wants to create something much more suited to the nature of man than what the Egyptians could ever perceive. And so the Egyptians were being used by a deeper intelligence that they didn't understand and they couldn't relate to. Miyad, as soon as they realized this, all the gods of the Egyptians started shaking and moving away. And the hearts of the people who believed, the belief is what gives power to the heart to persevere. And now when their beliefs are crumbling, so too their hearts are melting. Their hearts moved away from their belief. And their heart started melting like wax. Their entire belief in which they invested their entire being was melting right in front of their eyes. It was obvious even to the senses that they were wrong about how the world works and where they've invested their energy. Because he said, now we see that even before, when we were still worshipping him as a lord, this head of the Egyptians, even then he was just being used. It wasn't him really that wanted to be there. He was forced to be there because of a bigger power, because of a deeper interest. It moved away from that belief, melted like wax. How do we know that when the Pasuk says that the heart of Mitzri melted, that it melted like wax? says, My heart was like wax that melts within my stomach. And so you see this expression that when a belief falls apart, the heart no longer feels supported. This is why beliefs are sometimes very difficult to change. It's because our biology leans on them. And to change them would mean to change our biology, would mean to change the internal expression of how we see life. And this is exactly what needs to happen, but it's not easy. We're so used to the drawings of our imagination that the truth, which is infinitely more pleasant, might appear to be less pleasant while we're still discovering it. And so when it seems less pleasant, the heart doesn't know what to lean on. The heart feels not supported, feels unsure. And yet all this is because the way that we've built the identity, the way we've built the heart, the way that we've built our reliance on things that cannot really be relied on, something inside of us knows and is compensating. There are many things that the spirit is hiding from itself until it's ready to reveal to itself and it knows that the results will be favorable. So, It spoke about the name, it spoke about the emanations, it spoke about the process of creation of how the infinite becomes finite. And it said that even the wisest among men, the Egyptians were the wisest among men, in the time that Egypt existed there was nowhere, there was no one that understood like them. You might even say that the ground the background upon which the Torah was given was specifically the wisdom of the Egyptians. And yet, it was so distant from the truth that when the truth started revealing itself, it melted like it never existed. And this is because the truth is much more favorable to us than we can possibly imagine. The reason we can't imagine is because we've been fooled. We've been fooled by behaviors of people who if we were to ask them, even now, if they know how to explain life or they know what's happening or what we should aim for, they won't be able really to have a full coherent answer. None of us does. And yet we perceive reality as if some of the people, some of the things that we saw 
or heard or read are a real basis for interpreting life. And that's simply not the truth. Life is beyond. Life is bigger. Life should never be sacrificed for ideas. Life, if it's sacrificed, it's sacrificed for life. When people gave their life for the life force, it wasn't for an idea. It was for the real soul that exists. The soul that exists within all souls. And that's the only reason we should ever sacrifice anything. We should ever give up from ourselves is for the one that's beyond us, the one that's bigger than us, the one that's the reason for us. Because when we give up from ourselves to give to the one that is even more ourselves, when we give up from the one that doesn't know to the one who knows all, we become more of ourselves, not less. When we give it in the wrong place, we become less. We become less connected, we become less in tune with life. We have less desire for life. But when we give to the source, it fills us with desire, it fills us with life. Because it's the most precious interaction that we could ever imagine. There's nothing, there's nobody that would be more advantageous to have access to than the life force itself that we all have access to. So, may the life force awaken within us and may it happen soon.